What's happening guys? Welcome back to the Bowler X channel. I'm J.R. Raymond and we are going to talk a little bit about those little stubborn things that you need to know for when you travel to USBC Open Championship tournaments or honestly any tournament that you have to jump on a flight for. Uh, there's a couple of things that you're going to want to look into and pay attention to and I'm going to give you a few of those tips here in a minute so stay tuned. They say bowling is a dying sport. A dying sport. <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. BowlerX.com for the love of bowling. All right, welcome back. So the uh, the topic here being uh, traveling uh, with bowling balls and all the stuff you need for bowling. Uh, travel can sometimes be a pain in the butt. I know for some of you who've done it for the first time, um, you, you realize little things that you uh, you wish you would have known when you first traveled uh, to a different state or just got on a plane or whatever. Uh, and I'm going to try to hopefully give you a few of the tips here. The number one tip I can tell you is, and it's going to save you money, is if you're traveling with some of those big rollers, the big giant rollers, and you're trying to take them onto the plane, um, you're not going to want to do that because the fees for overweight bags that are over 50 pounds is pretty hefty. It's basically uh, paying for an extra bag to be on the plane. It's $150, I think, for Delta. Uh, I'm not sure what it is for other flights, but it's uh, it's a hefty little little fee there in order to take a bag that's overweight. So uh, getting using that bag is just not very convenient. Uh, I mean, it would be nice. The only way you actually get to take those big bags is if you fly first class, because then you I think you get 70 pounds. Um, and if, uh, yeah, I think that's the only way, right? Yeah, yeah. But the only cool thing about those bags is they carry your shoes and everything with you. You don't need a backpack. But that's what I recommend is actually getting the travel totes, those uh, the light ones, like the turbo ones. I always recommend the turbo ones. But if the turbo ones aren't in stock, you know, the Vice ones or Motive or Storm or whatever brand company you prefer, uh, they will work because they do keep you, if, as long as you're using 15 pounds, they keep you under that 50 pound mark. Usually they're right around 49 and a half pounds, uh, which gives you room for some of the items you're going to want to be careful with, which is knives, scissors, and your puff balls. You've got to be real careful with stuff like that. You can't really take them. I, I don't even recommend trying to take them on your carry-on because it's hit or miss. Sometimes they're going to see them and they're going to snag them from you. Sometimes they're not. Like I literally went I don't know, probably eight years traveling with a little tape knife, the retractable ones that just kind of fold together. Traveled with those for, you know, probably eight years, going to Vegas two or three times a year, you know, all kinds of different traveling, never had anybody question them. And then all of a sudden, um, I think it was like two years ago, all of a sudden they finally took it from me. And then every time after that, they would take it from me. So I started to actually put stuff like that in with my bowling balls. So you can grab a little Ziploc baggie or something, throw your rosin bag in there, throw your tape knife in there, um, and hopefully they don't get destroyed by the people who are putting the bags on the plane because they really don't care. They just toss them around. And that's the other thing is, if you can travel with older bags rather than brand new bags, that's probably a good idea too because they are going to toss your bags around. They're probably gonna break your wheels. They're probably gonna break straps. They're gonna break the zippers because they're gonna grab it by the zipper handle rather than grabbing it by the actual handle and they're gonna chuck them. So don't be surprised if you get a bowling ball and it's got some road rash on it because it does happen from time to time. Take your bowling ball into one of the pro shops there and just have them resurface it or have them get it to the surface that you want once you get there. So um, let me see the list here. Oh yeah, the cleaners. When you have your bowling ball cleaner and stuff, I don't even recommend taking cleaners with you because when you get to places, generally you can just buy a small bottle. If the five to $15 is really that important to you, um, then I guess you could just transfer a little bit of cleaner into these really little spray bottles and then put those in a carry-on or something. They've just gotta be, make sure they're under three ounces. They've gotta be the little tiny, less than three ounce bottle that you can spray on with a towel and stuff like that and you'll be good to go. And that goes for any of your liquids. Any of your liquids has to be under three ounces. Um, so like toothpaste counts as a liquid. So make sure you have the little travel size, everything. Travel size, everything, so that way you don't even have to worry about it. Uh, I've had some really expensive cologne snagged from me before. Uh, it was like a $90 bottle. Of, I know that's probably not expensive for some people, but it, for me, $90 bottle of cologne was, uh, 
I, there was nothing I could do. They wouldn't let me take it on and where was I gonna put it? Like I couldn't check it. All my bowling balls and everything were already checked. So uh, I had to just throw away a $90 bottle of cologne. Don't do that. Make sure you're using little tiny travel bag or tiny travel bottles in those too. Uh, avoid bowling balls as a carry-on. Don't put the bowling balls as a carry-on. Sometimes it's hit or miss. Sometimes they'll let you, sometimes they won't. It's a pain in the butt. Uh, if they do question it, then, then you're gonna have to turn all the way back around from security, go all the way back, check the bag, and then go back through security again. And if you're crunched on time, yeah, like I always am. I always, my, when I'm traveling, man, I always feel like I'm gonna be late for my flight. Like I look at the lines and I'm like, I'm here an hour and a half early and the line's not moving, I, I'm gonna be late. And then I always end up getting there with like an hour to spare. So, but just, just, Save yourself some time. Don't even bother trying to check bowling balls on the plane. Don't or don't try don't try to take them as a carry on. I should say. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Toothpaste. We already talked about that. Uh, if you do travel a lot, I definitely recommend doing the pre check. If you can sign yourself up online for pre check, uh, that's definitely worth it because the pre check lines are way quicker than those giant general boarding lines. They are just ridiculous for security. Um, Options for shipping bowling balls. You got USB. You got the USB-C uh, ball service that they have out there. I don't know the pricing on that, so you'd have to check on that. I don't think it's much of a deal, if any. Um, pricing on UPS and US, uh, USPS is it's gone up tremendously over the last few years. Shipping bowling balls and stuff. Uh, I know when I was when I shipped a uh, a case of balls to Vegas, they wanted like. I think it was like $95 or something. It's just not worth it at that point because you can just take an extra a, a bag on, on, on the plane. So if you're taking six already and then you need to get like six more out there or five more or four more out there, then okay, sure, maybe then the 95 is worth it. Um, but it just really depends. Like for me, if I'm going out to the World Series and it's in Vegas or something, I'm probably going to pay to ship balls out uh, or I'm going to... Uh, make sure I drill balls when I get out there. But that's also your option. When you get out to USBC, utilize those pro shops out there. Those guys have been out there watching the tournament. They've been hearing everything that they're talking about. They're talking. They, these guys have the inside scoop of how the lanes are playing, the types of balls that are working out there. Pick their brains out there. Pick the you know use the pro shop guys as uh, a way to get information on what you need because they can you I mean you can look through your bag and see what you've got and then you can go out there and drill a couple of balls yeah it might be expensive but if you're a type of person that gets in a lot of brackets or wants to play in a lot of action out there it's probably worth getting that extra information from some people and maybe drilling a ball or two when you're out there you know the, the four hundred dollars to drill a ball could possibly make you a few thousand dollars definitely worth the investment if you trust your capabilities so um Wow, let me see here. Is there anything else? I don't think I can think of anything else for that. Um, just make sure uh, when you pack, try to pack as light as possible. Nobody wants to be walking through uh, the, the concourse of the airport and everything with this huge giant bag and, you know, having your carry on being super heavy because I think they can still get up to 50 pounds, I think, maybe, maybe not. No, I think it's 25. Honestly, I don't even know how heavy your carry-on can be because I've packed them fairly tight and they never even said anything to me about it. So, um, especially times when I'm out on the road for over a week, like at the World Series or something, when you're there for a week and a half and you gotta find a way to get this little carry-on to carry all your clothes, that is tough. Um, but just be careful with a lot of this stuff. Make sure your sharp knives and stuff are not in your carry-on. Um, you're gonna use a backpack, so instead of those big rollers, make sure you carry a backpack with your shoes. I recommend trying to find a way to take an extra pair of shoes. Don't put your shoes on the plane, take the shoes with you. Put extra thumbs if you're a switch grip or interchangeable, make sure you take interchangeable thumbs with you um, on the plane with you, not underneath, because if they lose your bags, you're in trouble. You don't have your shoes, you don't have thumbs. What are you gonna do? You're gonna just go hang out, try to drill new balls and try to get them to match the thumbs and buy new shoes and do all that. If you want, put a pair of shoes underneath the plane and take an extra pair of shoes, a bowl and shoes with you in your bag. Um, but always put your thumbs in your bag with you. Don't put them, don't leave them in bowling balls because like I said, they chuck things. They throw things around. If they land just right, they're gonna break your favorite thumb and you're gonna be in big trouble. So just keep this stuff in mind when you travel. Go out to USBCs, have a lot of fun and put up a bunch of scores, make some money and yeah. That's pretty much it. So hopefully this is helpful. 
let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up. If you got other ideas for people, if I missed something, go ahead and put your comment below so people can uh, see and get that info in as well. So let me know how you guys, if you've already been out to USBCs, comment below. Let me know how you bowled. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to get out of here. Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Take care.